All right, good morning, everyone. We'll open the doors up. Good morning, gang. People are rolling in. We'll unmute Mr. Dave. Good to see you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I was a minute late there. I just took a quick trade on the ES, broke one of my limits or one of my entries. So uh, I took it off already since we're starting the trading room. I didn't want to actually leave you watching it. So I hit my first target and I just pulled it off. Gotcha. Nice. So you guys can watch it go to target two and three and uh, I won't be in the money anymore. Yeah, big divergence here on the Dow and the NQ. Yeah, I was looking at that. I'll pull that guy over. You look at this. I was trying to find out who in the Dow was getting murdered. Down one percent and still up per point seven percent on the Nasdaq, but it was even higher before. That's a crazy divergence. Yeah. Morning, Andre. Good morning. Yep. See, here it goes. Moving down to target two. That's all right. I wish I could put those indicators on uh, cryptocurrencies. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, the platforms are really kind of kind of bad, except for TradingView. TradingView is not too bad. It's funny how a lot of them, it feels like TradingView is the core because yeah. a lot of them look very similar now, but they're probably just white labeling it or something. They are, yeah, but they don't have the full functionality if you use it on another platform. Only TradingView has all of the bells and whistles. Okay, gotcha. But yeah, they're using that kind of the core platform. Morning, Indoor. Morning, Alexander. Alexander, good to see you from Australia, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while, I think. Yeah, very interesting day to be sure. Really big divergences here. The internals are just, yeah. I it mean, opened up right in the middle of the road there, didn't it? Now it's moving down. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just going to be one of those days where it's going to be up and down. I mean, unless I mean, unless we go negative on the, um, you know, if we go minus two thousand on the advanced declines, it's working hard to get there. That's for sure. Yeah, I know. Good job, Basham. You took that trade there as we hit as I was opening up the room. That's why I was a few minutes late. You were too. Nice. Sham's one of our Premium Plus members that's in the room that we're, uh, yep, there's, there's Target 2 hitting. I'll, I'll give you guys a hard time. You're costing me money again. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I'm happy to hear you, hear you guys are uh, leveraging this new system. It's working great. All fulfilled. Awesome, dude. Great. Yeah, now on the uh, on the SD and NQs, they've gone negative. They were positive early this morning. Now they're all negative. Oh, yeah, I see. Just broke. I'll bring that guy over. Yep, just broke down. SD's still there. up just slightly, but just SD's slightly. broke down. Another yeah, that was negative right from the start. And how about another uh, jobless claims report there? Five million more. 5.3, I think they were expecting five. It was a little bit over, but yeah. And uh, what is that, over 20 now in the last few weeks? Yeah, yeah, we're over oh, about 21 actually. I mean, just unbelievable, right? That's just amazing. Oh, look at it, it's really, it's coming, it's catching up now. NDX is yeah. dropping in a hurry. Yeah, look at that, yep. Yeah, and usually when it's up like that in the morning, especially at a plus four where it open, it typically stays there. So this is oh, not a good sign at all. Wow, yeah. Not a good sign. So, yeah, I actually, <laughs> I, I don't know if I want to do this or not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but. I found an interesting thing. There's a there's the the cryptocurrency market has been correlated with stocks for the last week or so. It's not always correlated, but when it is correlated, I kind of pay attention. Sure. 
So uh, I could share my screen and go through this if you guys are interested. Yeah, I can relinquish if you want. Sure. It's all yeah. yours, sir. I'll just go through this quickly. You guys see that okay? I got you coming across. Okay, so last night, last night, I was looking at the market. I had some money in the account and I decided, decided to do some trading. And so if you look at my fills over here, I bought 378,000 XLMs, which is stellar. And the average price is about 0 0.0459, which is right about in here, right at this little cross. And that, see, this is the thing that kills me. This is Coinbase Pro, but they have like no, I mean, the only thing that you can overlay is an EMA 12 and a 26. <laughs> oh, <you laughs> That's it. Anything on for indicators, really? Yeah, they, they have like no indicators at all. Um, and so they crossed right in here. And so I got in right here at 459.0459, about 387,000. You can see all the trades down here, 139, 46. They got kind of filled all over the place as low as uh, 0458. I find it interesting watching how the cryptos fill. That is different. Yeah, I put that in at market though. I mean, I paid a little higher fee for it, but I really wanted to get in as soon as that, as soon as it started crossing. Sure. Uh, on the, uh, on the, on the EMAs. So what do you got? And, the twelve and the what? It's a twelve and the twenty-six. Okay. Twelve and twenty-six. That's, I can't. You can't even adjust those. You know, which is this ridiculous. But anyway, it's rude. Yeah, it's brutal. Uh, but the 26 started moving up, and as soon as I saw the 12 start moving up on the short term, I got right in about here. So um, it wrote it up. I actually woke up at 4 o'clock, and I saw it at 5 cents, but I didn't end up getting out this morning until uh, 49. So at 49, which is right in this kind of congestion area here. Okay. So I ended up making $1,000. Uh, just on that trade. Wow, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 387,000 uh, XLM minus uh, this. I mean, you're talking about 387,000. I think it's like, I mean, each penny is $4,000. So they have enough volume that you're able to fill those? I moved the market. <laughs> when I put my buy order in, you see this little pump up right here? Yeah, that, that was me. That makes you feel big and strong. Yeah, that was yeah right. And then when I sold, it was right in here. It pumped right down. Boom. Interesting. Uh, so I did move the market. I think I'm probably going to trade uh, Ethereum instead. But yeah, anyway, big fish. One of my uh, one of my indicators I use on TradingView. I still like TradingView a lot is the total indicator, which is the total amount of cryptocurrency. It's the crypto total market cap. And so I keep an eye on that and I look at the percentage changes. So if it's going up, I can stay long. If it starts to drop off, I, I go short. But the big key is, since they've been correlated with stocks, is that when the, this was last night, after the Dow futures turned higher, Remember that? So we were down, Cloud, 130, 140 points late, late last night around 9, 10 o'clock Eastern time. And then, then they started moving up. They were only down about 80 points. And so I said, well, there's the correlation. And as soon as the Dow futures started moving up, that's where I started looking to go along here. Got right in, rode it up, and got out here for a $1,000 profit. As soon as I saw it. Now, there was a couple uh, times this morning in which the uh, Dow futures kind of dropped off and then they rallied back up and it followed perfectly. Interesting. Yeah, so, and it was just a little bit delayed. So the Dow moved up first and then cryptos That'd moved up. That'd be perfect. That's, yeah. that's, that's a dream right there. If you got a lead that stays there, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm kind of watching that. See, now we're, start, we're selling off in the Dow and we're starting to sell off in um, the cryptos. And so that's kind of like a little tell, you know, it's a little tell when we like see finding that. their tells. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a little uh, tell there. Anura, now, I don't know. Anura I don't know, know what, uh, what platform that is. That's 
Coinbase you're doing that on, right? Yeah, this is Coinbase Pro. Yeah, this is Coinbase Pro. So see if they're available in your country in New Rug. Everyone's different. Yeah. I mean, if I had Binance, I would use Binance instead to do this. Uh, but this is, yeah, because I think Binance uses the um, uh, TradingView platform. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles of, of TradingView, but. Uh, so you can probably better. put your moving averages or other indicators on trading view. They got a lot more flexibility, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can put a lot more indicators on trading. View. So anyway, I thought I'd give you guys, so that's a thousand dollars worth of advice right there. If the, <laughs> um, if, if this correlation continues now, they pumped up a lot higher and they're ho kind of holding their gains, uh, but they are pulling back a little bit. So, and I also expect the, uh, the Dow to kind of pick up. I think we're going to, I think we may end up turning around, especially with those internals. Uh, if they're not, you know, they're still negative, but they're actually a little bit better than they were. So talk to me about that total indicator one more time. <laughs> yeah. So this is really important. So it seems like all the cryptocurrencies kind of move in tandem. Right. And, um, in this total indicator, uh, if you do a search on trading view, it's the crypto total market cap. Okay. And I don't, I think all you'd have to do is if you wanted to add a symbol in your watch list, all you have to do is total and it will give it to you right here, right at the top. And it's calculated by trading view. So it's kind of like the same number that's on um, coin market cap. It says that the market total market cap. Okay. And so I watched that percentage and I'm tracking that percentage. Uh, this morning it was up over 8% or 7%, something like that. And then I saw it start just kind of stair step down and I, and I started seeing stocks move down and the, the combination of those two indicators that I should get out. Gotcha. So like an overall crypto market barometer, basically if it's moving up or down, not necessarily if it's positive or negative, but how it's moving as you're watching it. That's exactly right. Perfect. Interesting. Yeah. So I, all I do is watch that. <clears throat> if I see that start to, to kind of pull down, that typically will go down first before the crypto. So I, I kind of keep an eye on that. And then just, uh, you know, if I see it moving lower and lower and lower, I'll just either exit a position. But it's the first time I really, I mean, I've, I've traded crypto about a year ago, but I haven't, and my wife's been trading Bitcoin, but she stopped because. It was just, I mean, she was up like till three o'clock in the morning <laughs> trading. And then she, then she, you know, and she works at a bank. She had to get up and go to work. And it's like, nah, I can't do this. So. But I saw this last night. I've been watching. I mean, the correlations are correlations between the general stock market and crypto has been pretty tight over the last uh, few weeks. See, now we're down at uh, 5.85. We're just over six. So. And, and the thing, the funny thing is too, is that the technical, I, I said, you know, I, I really don't get crypto too much, but the one thing that is working really, really well is if you have higher highs and higher lows and, and it, it respects that. Standard. If you have a higher high here, but you can't get a higher high and you got a lower high, that's a big warning sign. That's the sideways warning, yep. Yeah, and, and these rounding tops, those are a big no no. And then the you know, the twelve and the or the yeah, the twelve and the twenty six kinda help, you know. So if you if you close down below that, that's not a good sign either. It's pretty are, simple actually. Are you able to short on there or you can only buy and then sell later? No, you can only buy you can only belong. Okay. They are coming out with a um margin trading. I would imagine with margin trading you're gonna be able to go long and short but they haven't instituted it yet. I'm on a waiting list, I guess. Yeah, I haven't even ventured or foray into actual trading a crypto before. You know, obviously we've just been, you buying it and holding it for later. So this is an interesting uh, opportunity, like you say. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's, it's pretty primitive in the way you trade it, but if you pay attention to that total market cap, it kind of gives you a pretty good, and as long as it continues to follow uh, stocks, um, you know, I think it's interesting. Now the commissions are just ridiculous though. Uh, let me see if they actually put in my commissions here. 
uh, fees. Yeah. I mean, I just sold, you know, five dollars and 80 cents seven i think it cost me like 60 dollars total in fees just in fees to 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 do those sell orders uh which is kind of ridiculous but anyway anyway just thought i'd share that with you guys very cool back to you bum, bum. Yeah, in order, that is definite. That is Coinbase Pro, Binance. Uh, I would prefer Binance definitely. The why is the correlation starting to develop? I, you know, it's on and off. It seems like sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. I think it's been more recently. It has been correlated with stocks because I think institutions are starting to pay attention to crypto, and I think we're starting to get some Wall Street firms coming in and starting trading. It's not just, and it's market makers on Wall Street, it's not just retail investors because the entire market seems to move together. It's, it's all moving together now. And I think it's because Wall Street's coming in. Uh, do I think the Fed is getting interested? It's possible, I mean, if they're buying junk bonds, I wouldn't be surprised if they could step in and start buying crypto too. Well, there's nothing else left. They're buying everything else already. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What is, what's left? I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Sean, there you go. I'll make the next course will be on crypto. We're, we're in the works already. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Came right down and hit that third target for anybody that was still in. Take those oh, profits, yeah. boys. Yeah. Out of the internals. Internals are, yeah, they're. We're coming down for sure. Yeah, permanent restore at 80%, but. Don't do a 20. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, spies breaking down. Let's, let's look at what our herding's doing. Balance of power is growing to the negative and we have full bearish herding currently. Yeah. Let's see how it looks on a daily. Should be kind of looking at on the daily if it matches up with the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet has been, uh, we've had pretty positive bullish herding and then we had negative yesterday. Yeah, there we go. Yep, that's exactly right. The bearish herding is starting to fill out a little bit. Yeah, we're down to one right now on today and three in the bear side. BOP curve turning back red after a couple days in the green there. It's all lining up for your next big move down. We'll see how long it takes to do it though. Yeah, I, uh, I'm anticipating here that, uh, we could see a really, really nasty move lower. I actually just pulled out, obviously no advice, as always guys. I personally pulled out some of my longer term in my M1 just to grab those profits because it was a nice month on it. Had some nice returns, so I figured I'd lock it up before we take our next big leg down personally. Yeah, what's interesting is we got a statement yesterday. Uh, my wife has this a uh, little retirement account. It was a, um, oh, it's not a 401k. What was it? IRA. And uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable. It was in a stable dividend. It was in a stable fund with some dividend income. And it was down 26%. Ooh. And okay. that was a statement for last month. So it, it didn't, count, didn't count the rebound we've had over the last few couple of weeks. So I'm thinking it's back up again, and um, yeah, it's probably her, half of that back or so, or a quarter of it, it, somewhere between there. Yeah, I told her to call and get get out of that thing. That's the only one that doesn't have online access. She didn't have a lot in there. I was only like, you know, it was only a few thousand dollars. But sure. Yeah. At the same time, you know, you don't want to lose anything, right? Now. Exactly. Protect whatever you got, right? <clears throat> Here we go. Here's the turn. And crypto's moving higher. 
<laughs> yeah, you're welcome for the masterclass. I'm glad it's working for you. He says it's a game changer in your trading. That's awesome. Good. I'm glad it's helped, man. That's the reason I did it. Find something that works and share it with you guys and help people out. Dave did it for me, so now I can repay the favor. Pay it forward, man. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic course you did. It was really, really good. Yep, I liked it. You got me excited about trading again, you know, because I hadn't really done any day trading for a really long time. Well, it's been so hard. That's why I figured we need to get some more rules to define our good entry and exit points. So this helps clear the way and get away from the chop. Absolutely. And um, the way you put it together kind of combined, I mean, uh, you know, not to pat my own back, but you, you took what I had and then improved on it. You actually made it better. Uh, which is absolutely fantastic. And, and like I said, you know, Tuesday, you know, this may be the only way some people can make a living. And that's how important this stuff is. Yeah, Wayne says, I second that. Thanks, Dan. Profitable every day this week. Wow. In simulation with only one trade, okay. Uh, biggest problem for me is getting up at 6 a.m. to do the analysis. I know what you mean, man. Yeah. Yeah, that could if you're, be. If you're uh, just wait till you wake up a few times and you sleep in and you come down and you look at what you would have done and you say, oh, I just missed out on this nice setup and the next morning you'll get up a little bit easier or you'll go to bed sooner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I've done it too. It's like, yeah, I want to sleep in today or I got something to do. Like yesterday I had to go take care of some car appointments. So I wasn't able to trade pre-market and there was some nice move that everybody else was getting in the room. But I'm like, I'm glad someone's getting it. Ex yep, it will teach you patience. That's one thing that uh, this system will do as well, for sure. Yeah, I was looking into the sniper uh, analogy and there's way too many people out there that have coined that phrase, so. I think Tom had a good one where he called it the the snipe and profit for the S and I kind of like that. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. A little bit shorter. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I saw that. That, that. that sounds pretty good. Yes, Ron, I still do have to record a few more videos. It's one of those I got to get the time to to bust down and do it, but it is coming. Just so it wasn't just the act of trading and the theory behind it and why things are where they are. So yes, that will be still coming. I've only did the NQ those first two times where you saw it in my overview of the profits that I did before the trading week. I haven't traded the N MNQ or NQ at all since then. I figure I'm not gonna expand until I needed to, but that is a lot more volatile, so definitely paper trade that and understand the nuances of the NQ before you ever put any real money behind it because that thing bounces a lot faster than the ES does. Yeah, MES is perfect. I figure if you can make four figures, once you move to full contracts, you're just getting greedy at that point. <laughs> yeah. If it turns around on you, like it is here, that hurts a lot. You better be getting out. That's why we have the rules that we do that I set up for you guys. Oh, Ron, you're still young at heart. We're all catching you, don't worry. He says he's uh he feels like the old guy trying to keep up with everybody making all the money. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I got you beat, Ron. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I got you beat. There's the first green oh outside of one that just opened. First green tick on the up and down volume, so you can see how that affected that little turn. Yep. And um boy, I don't know if you noticed, but the, the M and Q hit those uh hit the um no, uh, I don't have right on the person's pivot. pivot. Yep. Yeah, person pivot. Yeah, right there. Perfectly. Let's see where the RTY turned. It was approaching a supply and a Camarilla on the YM. Yep. I think they were just yep. looking at my profit target. That was the whole thing. That's why it turned. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, we gave Dan his profits. Now we're now we're done. There you go. Now we can move it. 
all those trading knowledgeists are collecting their profits right here so we can move it back up. There was a, um, there was this famous trader from the, from mid 2000s. I forgot his name, but uh, I forgot his name, but uh, I talked to a market maker in, at the CBOE one time and he was telling me that every time this guy put out an, uh, an alert that he, they could tell everybody on the floor could tell who it was from because all the orders would come flooding in <laughs> to start buying or selling stuff. And they really do. They could. I mean, some of these guys could, if they have a large subscriber base, can move the market. Right. Yeah. You know, then what do you do? <laughs> That's why I think there's legal things for people that do that, right? Like they can't be in trades that they're touting them except for like a day later or a day before or something like that. If he's in, if he's registered, yeah, he can't, he can't get into it before everybody else. That's called front running. Right. Unless you work for the Fed. Unless you work for the Fed, exactly. Then you can front okay. run all you want. <laughs> Any questions you guys got? I know we've been rambling and just kind of freelancing. It's always fun. Yeah, not much news today except for the big unemployment number. <clears throat> oh, we got a, there we go. I gotcha, Keith. Might have been unmuted by accident, sir. We don't want you to divulge anything you're secretly talking about. Yeah. Yeah, other than that, I, I mean, I'm, as far as the economy goes and as far as, um, you know, the big, I think the big picture here is that, uh, we're probably going to end up continuing to go lower. I can't imagine. I, I heard a couple of people this morning talk about the economy, how just how slow it's going to be getting back to normal. You know, who's going to go out to a restaurant right away? Yeah, my wife and I were talking about that yesterday, too. Even if they said, hey, the doors are open, because that's what they're trying to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. When can you open up the country for business again? There's so many people that are just going to be like, yeah, oh, yeah, no thanks, I'm staying home. Right. At least that's what I don't think it's going to be no flood right away. Yeah, and then not only that, but the restaurants are going to have to make changes. They usually crowd tables in together, and now they have to kind of separate them a little bit, and they're not going to get as many people in the restaurant. Well, I think the biggest thing is going to be is, how many restaurants don't open when they're able to, you know, yeah. just because they say a stay at home order is done. How many of them are already calling the quits and saying, Hey, we didn't have this much cushion. We're not coming back to business. Yeah. yeah That'll be scary and sad. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is yesterday, or yesterday, I don't know if you heard this or not, but New York state's uh, New York state governor said everyone in a public place has to wear a mask. Oh, I didn't hear that. Executive order. Yeah, so I mean that's going to make if the if he keeps it on, uh, it's going to be impossible to go to a restaurant. How are you going to eat with a mask on? <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Andre wants to know what your uh, if you think it's going to bounce off of eighteen cents for XRP or not. <laughs> I have no idea. That's it. that's the only problem with crypto. I, I, there's not a lot of good indicators out there to give give me any kind of not like we have with. Um, uh, you know, with stocks and futures, uh, there just isn't anything that's really, really good. Um, I, you know, my wife and I kind of started talking about it last night and she goes, well, do you, you know, Bitcoin dropped down to like 6,700 or something. And she goes, you think it's going to go up? I said, I have no idea. Yeah. There's, there's no rational thinking in that crypto space. No, there, I mean, we don't really have the vol even the volume isn't very good. You can't tell from the volume. Um, so, I mean, I just traded the technicals yesterday, but otherwise, I really don't know. If, if in five minutes that could change, the picture could change, and you know, we could bounce off at 18 and then just blast down through it. Well, and the same thing goes like you see the correlation right out of the market. And if that suddenly changes because more volume comes into the crypto space and we get things, yeah, anything can happen. So if you use it until it doesn't work anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's a big one too. If you're able to do that correlation between the, the traditional market and you see a turn up there, 
you kind of have that backstop that's helping you say, oh yeah, we have these technicals and this volume behind the real market or the traditional market, I should say. And then you're able to take a, a position there and exit it when you see profits. That helps where you're not just doing a technical on the crypto itself. So it's kind of that contributing factor that helps that for sure. Yeah, there's way more uh, transparency in the traditional markets. Uh, and indicators that you can use, um, for sure. Mark says, all I can say is thank you, Dan and Dave. Every day this week, I've had an average net profit of 120 points on the MES. Wow, nice. No way this can happen by accident. Awesome strategy. Point being um, 0.25. <laughs> is that the correct vernacular? <laughs> Not quite sure what that means. <laughs> Do you mean $120? 120 points would be a lot. I don't think it's moved up. That's a lot of points. <laughs> right. Yeah, 100, $120 maybe. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Dan, uh, Dan deserves a tremendous amount of credit here. Uh, he's really been a great teacher and a great mentor and uh, for you guys. Uh, just. Uh, yeah. Well, yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And. Curtis says he's in the market today and the internals are all negative. So we should just wait for a rally to the upside and sell at that time. Is that right? Well, uh, yeah, we do have negative. You know, if we don't change, if the internals don't change before noon, let's say, I think the afternoon session is probably going to be more telling than the morning session right now. Uh, but the, with the NASDAQ up and the Dow down, that's typically not how the market just continues to drop. Uh, usually they're either both up or both down if you're going to expect a big move. And so that's why I'm kind of looking at this market move as kind of a little bit of fake out, maybe a little, maybe the afternoon, will, you know, we'll see a little rally here, but unless things change, unless we start to see some real dramatic moves lower in the, in the NASDAQ, we're probably not going to see a big market decline. It's just going to be chop all day. Look at this quadruple bottom. Right off of yesterday's SR level. That's interesting. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Wow, yeah. Boy, they just stopped right on the dime. And once it poked a little bit, it couldn't close. Yeah. That's interesting. It is interesting. Right on the, what is this? That's SR1, uh, SR2 there. So, uh, and then it, it, it halted right on SR1. Interesting. Yeah, held that line in the 50s. Was the, right was the wick. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, 1% up there and 1% down, 0.8 down. That's quite the, I haven't even looked at YMNQ recently just because I've been too busy with the MES. That's got to be a ridiculous looking chart right now too. For sure. Anybody tracking that? Is uh, Eric, I don't think is in today. I think he's busy. He was one of the few that was still trading the spread. Josh is my unofficial moderator in the Slack channel. He's going to town right now. I see those guys talking. <laughs> I'll jump back to that after the trading room, guys. I can't do both. I think they're talking about taking profits, so it's good. Again, what did we see the few times where, whether we were up and shortly after our session here, it would drop off with the irrationality of these markets. There isn't anything to say that this couldn't come right back up to the midline and move towards the top with this market these days. We just don't know. That's why we build what we do. But yeah, at the same time I say that, I'm starting to think about turning down. So we'll see what it wants to do here. It doesn't feel like an update to me. <clears throat> no, it doesn't. But um uh, the internals don't say a big down day either. <laughs> right. It's not, look at our volumes kind of leveling off here. Yeah. And the advancing decline are making a comeback. So this could just be a chop day the rest of the day too. Yeah. I'm thinking chop. I'm thinking I'm, I got my profits out and I'm done trading. So it's just a matter of being a spectator at this point. 
Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that some people struggle with too is over trading. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You got to be patient. If you really want to be successful, the best times, as I mentioned, are in the mornings for me, but, um, you know, before 11, I'm, I'm done. Yep. Uh, and then it just requires patience for the setups. Yeah. Even if you see something crazy happening, you're like, Oh, I'm missing out on this huge move. It's like, you already got your profits locked up. So there's tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, you want to you want to play the long game here, not the not the short game. We're not winning the lottery. We're building a system and a income. That's right. You want the income, and you want the market to be your ATM. I kind of like that one. You should put that on the sales letter. <laughs> <laughs> We're not playing the lottery. We're building income. You got it. I trademarked it. Yeah. It's all good. We're a team. Whoa, new stimulus package in Congress. What is this? Uh oh. Uh, uh, this is a YouTube video. Wait a minute. Okay. I was going to say, me, that might make it go flying. Let me see if I can uh, verify this from a reliable source. Oh, yeah, but how long is this one going to take out if they do make another hmm. one? Because did you see what there's holding up before? I need to put my signature on the checks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then they deleted that video from Julia Chatterley. Oh, did they? They deleted it. Of course they, they did. I got the I got the video though. I I I screen captured it. Nice. So I mean, if you want a copy, just DM me on Twitter. Right on. She did say the president wants to put his signature. Now traditionally, it's the Treasury Secretary that signs all the checks. Yep. Now, he's the guy with the with the purse, right? Right. And. uh so yeah because wasn't that the first time that a president's yeah signature would have ever been on one yeah yeah it was funny i maybe it's not true maybe maybe the reason they took it down was because it wasn't true but it sure sounded like she had sources inside the treasury saying it was true yeah i don't remember where i saw it i saw it, it wasn't just one spot either but you know how everybody repeats everything so it could have just been read sharing articles but yeah i think they were resharing it yeah. no i don't see anything in here i know they're working on another bill uh, but i don't see anything on cnbc confirming that uh the headline i saw was another two thousand dollars per person really yeah I'm not sure if this guy uh, although this guy this guy that uh is doing this Oh no, recommend new stimulus package in Congress, $2,000 per month. And this guy um, is actually pretty good. Yeah, he's, um, he's, he's revealed a couple of things. Uh, one of them was the, um, uh, oh yeah. Uh, so I know somebody who's trying to close on a house. He got laid off from Disney. Um, but they no, not laid off yet. He was still being paid by Disney, even though he wasn't going into work. And so he was supposed to close today. The lending company ca called Disney and now he's been furloughed and he didn't even know. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So he could not close on his house and the deal is off. And he has a house that he sold, which he has to go through with now. And he's homeless. Oh my God. And so he's finding out that he's getting furloughed through his lender. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because he called the lender. He goes, hey, are we still on? Because everybody knows that they're doing BOE's uh, verification. The day of. Right on that day of closing. And uh, the guy said, well, we, no. Well, we talked to your boss, and he <laughs> said that you're furloughed. <laughs> I got some news for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. That is unbelievable. And so he's got to move out in 14 days the end of the month from his place because he sold it well you know what he probably should do and yeah. probably just take his money from his sold house and buy an rv and live in that for two years and then buy a house when prices are down i'll suggest that to him that's a great idea that's a great idea i like that idea i would do that if we I didn't can, have I, one you that can trade from anywhere now yep exactly it's something we seriously want to do in the long run it's like Man, if I could accelerate that plan, but we got one that's finished in high school right now, so we can't 
be uh, mobile livers yet, but I think that would be a fantastic opportunity actually. Yeah. Sell your house now before the market goes down and then buy another place wherever you've always wanted to in like two or three years, four years, five years, whatever it is, get a bunch of land. Yeah. Then settle down again. Yeah. Just buy some raw land, put the trailer on there, hook up whatever you can and uh, live on that. I, that. That sounds pretty attractive to me. I'm not sure my wife would go for it, but she's not well, an outdoor some, person. They make some really nice RVs, Dave, that I know you can afford. They do. I've seen them. I've seen, I've seen some incredible ones. I mean, they're gorgeous. I like yeah. them. We like to go to the show just to, to see what's out there. It's like, it's unbelievable what they make. Yeah, I've seen some really incredible ones where the sides pop out and you got like, you know, big screen TVs and you got luxury bathrooms, pretty big bathrooms. And I mean, it's just, yeah, it's incredible. Right? Yeah. As long as you got an internet, we can do it. Yeah. That'd be the fun day where we do this show from a, from a motorhome or an RV. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you from Missouri today. Yeah. It would in the Ozarks. Fun. That would be fun. If you haven't seen that show yet, check it out if you like that. <laughs> yeah, it is a good show. No, I, I started watching the, uh, the 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 new season. The third season came out, yep. Yeah, I'm on the third episode, I think. Second or third episode. It's just after, she's on the plane with the guy, with the big guy. Okay. Explaining how she wants to uh, roll out his, uh, you know, how to protect him. From gotcha, I won't give you any spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you just wait for the last episode, though. Oh, that's hold on your shorts. <laughs> yeah. Sham's got a question. See, I'm not watching the Slack channel. Mark's happy. <laughs> Do we know if this system will still work as well with lower volatility? Yes, th this is the plan is it'll still work. It probably, it'll depend on how much the movement is at that time, but the patience and the plan was still going to be the same. You know, if we go back to, if we only have... 20 point moves throughout the day, which would be a crazy non-moving market. Then, then we could shift back to a different strategy. If it got that, if the movements got that muted. So, but accordingly, yeah, the majority of it will still work unless we had like zero movement, which I don't foresee that for any time soon. Yeah, there we go, guys. NASDAQ's up over 1%. Um, Dow's only down 137 on the futures now. So we're we're starting to move higher as anticipated. Yeah, someone might be uh, seeing your stimulus package if we get these kind of jumps moving on right now. Yeah. Maybe that was real. Yeah, this guy, this guy on YouTube is he's Meet Kevin on YouTube. Um, he's got three hundred sixty-five thousand subscribers. That is huge. But yeah, he broke a couple of things that I've used in the past, and it, it turned out to be correct. So if they're, I mean, if they're, <laughs> man, oh, I see the, the, yeah, okay. You see something? I see your YouTube channel. That one just, I just saw the new 12,000 per person package at 2,000 a month. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah. See if that's the same guy or not. No, he, he didn't have anything about 12,000 total. Oh, here it is. Small business rescue program uh, hits 349 billion limit is now out of money. So that's another thing too. Are they going to extend that? I mean, they're just giving money to everybody, I suppose. I mean, did you see the credit card, card uh, loan loss uh, yesterday? Bay? For B of A? For B of A was $3.5 billion, yeah. and City was $7 billion. I can just imagine what all the other, um, uh, you know, card companies, you're talking billions and billions of dollars in credit card defaults. Yeah. Nobody's paying money. Right. Yeah, they're not going to pay their credit cards. That's the last thing they're going to pay. Hmm. Yeah, if they can't buy food, they're not going to pay their credit card. Exactly. I was already hearing stories, too, of you know limiting who can go in the store to go buy food, like 20 at a time. That's a scary thought. Well, they do it here now. Um, they have a limit of 140 in the store. It's a big store, but big supermarket, but they're limiting 140. I don't know how they're counting everybody. Yeah, the one that I heard was a smaller more. store and it was 20. And there was, you know, uh, it was like a rat maze that you could only walk through certain areas and get certain things. Yep, they have arrows on the aisles. So everybody has to walk in the same direction. That's just surreal. 
I know it's unbelievable. It's crazy. And then Fox News came out with a story saying that it was this was a bio, uh, 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 not a weapon, but a it was a bio uh, lab leak from that Wuhan lab. Uh, they were uh, evidently the source that they are using said that it was a um, response in 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 um, not to chemical warfare but to uh, try to prevent a chemical warfare from the United States in case we decide to go with a bioterrorism attack on China <laughs> and so they're trying to come up with a counteracting agent or something some sort of and and they ended up. Uh, somebody got it in the in the lab, and then went out and just infected everybody. That's wow! All. That was from Fox News. Interesting. Yeah, and now I mean everybody's like, "What the?" Yeah. Where's then? It's not like you can get recourse, but that's what people will scream for. Exactly. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it could really turn people against China at this point. Oh, it's funny, as Sean, as Sean mentions, do you see the snippets from Netflix and movies made in 15 and 17 talk about, well, coronavirus has been around. This isn't the first time there's been a thing called coronavirus. Right. There's a, that's why it's 18 or whatever. So that's not a new thing. But, yeah, it's funny. Like, you look back at Simpsons, and the Simpsons had it in their show, like, a decade ago. It's like they knew what was coming there. People are joking about that too. So yeah, it's not like it's the first time. It's just they're using it as the excuse this time. That's why it's global news. Right. And I'm not scared to say it. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they had um I and there's lots of there's lots of coronaviruses out there. Do you know why it's called corona? I think I mentioned it before, but I looked at it one time, I don't recall off the top of my head between the you know, the, the novel and the different naming of it. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of calling this a novel coronavirus. I don't know why they're calling it novel. Maybe because it's so different than the other ones. But Corona, uh, there was a Saint Corona in the Catholic Church that was the is the patron saint of diseases. And so you're supposed to pray to Saint Corona if you have some sort of virus or flu or something. Well, that doesn't sound like a good saint to be. Yeah, I know. That's not the kind of saint that it's I like want. Saint Jude in the lost causes yeah Sham says exact to the plot as to what is happening now interesting there we go guys we're going higher over 100 on the uh, thank you thank you hit that resistance level and it just hurt yeah sitting right on it so it takes a while to chew through it if it's going to Yeah, it's kind of moving into choppy waters. That's what it's looking like. Yeah, you got the you got the uh, market timer spreadsheet there handy. I can get it in a second. I think I got it open here somewhere. So yesterday, or the day before yesterday, it was, so it was Tuesday. We had a price anomaly of four hundred and fifty-four. Oh, yeah, good call. Remember that? Yeah. And so if we're up, if if or if the market is up four hundred. If the market is up and we have a price anomaly of 454, that means the next day it's going to snap back the other way. So it's it goes in the opposite direction. And we were down 400 and what, 445 yesterday? Yep. Real close. Really close. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was the, it was the day we're up 558 points. We had a price anomaly of 443, which means that the next day it's going to be down. Oh, it's uh, now, isn't it? And it worked. I mean, look at that. The price, the price anomaly is almost identical to the price decline. It's a two point difference. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we have a 254, but yeah, I mean, it'd be kind of hard to believe that we'd be up 254, but hey, you never know. Right. This snaps back the other way again. Well, look at this 21 day sum from 764 to 3316. You know why that happened is because it is a 21 day sum. So 20, 21 days ago when it hit that 764, we must have been like 
down like 2,000 points. I was going to say that must be the two or three thousand dollar day here. Yeah, it's one of those days we're down a lot. So the big moves here are going to come back. So the rubber band's snapping the other way. Yep. Yeah, but that was kind of funny though. We saw the 443 price anomaly and we're, we're down 445 exactly. Right. You know, that's how you, it's interesting when you find those correlations and you're like, hey, this yeah. means something or this could mean something here. Yeah, you know, we had the one day skip and then now more bearish herding coming in while we're losing the bullish herding. Yeah, so yeah, you know, that's a pretty good chunk of bullish herding in there. Um, that's why I didn't think today, even though we start to see bearish herding, it's not the typical setup. Typically bullish herding has to kind of uh, we have that last column that kind of sticks out before we start it. Yeah, see, that's a, that's a more typical. We Bullish herding is gone, and then we start the bearish herding in. Like here, when you stair step one, two, three, this yeah. was really extreme where it went quick. Yeah, very, very quick, yeah. So we got a good chunk of bullish herding here. That's why I don't think it's going to turn around and go down right away. I think we have to kind of work through that bullish herding. When the bullish herding is... Kind of getting real sparse um, then we'll probably see a see some sort of a sell-off and we're still above that magical 1500 for the average share volume or volume per that's share. another thing too yeah absolutely that is bearish that is very bearish as long as that stays above 1500 the flow is starting to turn here potentially about about a 57 58 73 it flows coming back up yeah so today, if we get a little bit of a kind of a sideways to movement and we see no bullish herding and we continue a little bearish herding maybe, um, that could set up a really nice decline. Uh, let's see, tomorrow's Friday. I was just going to say another Friday has not been good this year. Fridays have not been good now. So we may, or a Sunday night kind of thing, we may go sideways again tomorrow, and then Sunday night we're down big. I am anticipating though one, another really big move, maybe even uh, surpassing the moves we've seen already, which would be a 3,000 point decline in a day or, yeah. That'd be a doozy for sure. Yeah. They can pull out all of the uh, trading stops they want. I think we're gonna be, uh, Things are Sham says the system works on Friday as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, MES works nice on the. Uh, and the best part is a lot of times it works even before the open. So mm -hmm. that, that's the real awesome is uh, when you can be done before that. This was the uh, new jobs claim move where it was not as exaggerated as it was the previous week. So I think they're getting used to these multi-million dollar new jobless claims. Yeah, it was a definitely a spike, but uh, I think it finally came out after the open here. Yeah. Just keep following those rules, Asham. It'll pay off in dividends for you. And we're getting close to the top of the hour, so let us yeah. know if you guys got anything. Almost there. You guys know where to hit me up in the in the meantime. <clears throat> Any questions you got or anybody's not a premium plus member yet, get that upgrade in while we're still at the half price for the launch. It will not stay there forever. So take advantage of our discount, half price. And just for your quick update, after my trading today, we continue our spike up. We're up to 8,500 in the in the new account that started at five. I like those returns. Nice, yeah, that's very, very nice. Very nice. Any big plans for the weekend? <laughs> uh, during the lockdown? <laughs> which, which room are you heading to this weekend? Yeah, I know. Yeah, let's see. It's we have our choice of the family room, the library, the dining room. I'm getting tired of the dining room. I'm going to Lost Backyard. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Something like that. I forget what it actually was. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, somebody was saying that it was his, his wife and his anniversary. Should we go to the front of the house, the back of the house, or the side? <laughs> I said, which one? Everyone has the best sunset. Because that, that would be nice to see. You have to joke to get through things, right? Yeah, for sure. We're all human. Yeah, for sure. I don't, Today we got snow. Did you get snow last night? We had some of the most ridiculous weather patterns two days ago. Yeah, we had snow this week. That's insane. This is April. You know, Easter's past. Yeah, we had it, we had like an inch or two of snow on Easter. Unbelievable. It was you know, crazy. With all of the, the 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 health things going on, at least we could get some nice weather. I thought maybe if I didn't talk about it, you wouldn't get the snow, but apparently that didn't work either. <laughs> no, it didn't work. Uh, all right ladies and gentlemen i think we're about to wrap it up so be good out there do some good learning and practice good rules and we'll catch you next week yeah keep practicing guys keith have a great one curtis you're welcome sean always good to see you appreciate you guys coming up and joining us for sure and your ag, absolutely. Yep, it's been fun. We look forward to these, don't we, Dan? Absolutely. And Tuesday's good for you next week? Yep, I think we're, uh, nothing's in the way right now. All right, good. You know, if you want to do it every day, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I take some of my profits away. Oh, yeah, that's true. We need time, we need time to, uh, to trade. To I got to make some money like all my traders too, right? I know. We got to do that. Oh, my gosh. We just gapped higher on the five minute. Oh, no, we didn't. I, geez. I saw a line on the MNQ. It looked like it was about 40 points higher. That's the way I felt when I saw that XRP chart last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. That's $7,000. I, I still had people tell, talking to me about that. It was crazy. I know yeah. it was a glitch with the Bitcoin price, but I still saw it and it was still there. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah, I know. I think it's Coinbase. Coinbase messed up. Yeah, that was definitely a crossing the signals there. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great day. Great weekend. And we'll talk to you Tuesday. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate everything. You guys Thanks, have a great Dan. weekend. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye.